Good afternoon, YouTube. Right, um, I think I mentioned before on my bucket list was to make myself a nice big um, needle case. Oh, lordy. Um, which I've done. So um, this is it. It's huge. It's far too big, actually. Oh, I could have made it a lot smaller. Um, but as you can see, it's a little bit crazy. Um, I do have a lot of pins and things. I haven't put anything on here yet. I don't know what I'm going to use that page for. But it was basically felt. I had some packets of pins. I love these John James pebbles. Um, this one is, what's that one? Sharps, I think. Anyway, yeah, sewing needles. Um, and it's somewhere to keep like a safety pin and a couple of um, pins if I need them when I'm doing hand sewing. And that's my needles. I stamped the words um, using archival ink uh, just on scraps of fabric basically and sewed them on. So as you can see, like it says here, the different needles. I, I particularly wanted to get my beading needles sorted because um, they're so thin and fragile that, you know, I was worried, oh, well, they just keep breaking. So I was really glad to get those properly put away as it were. So I've got plenty of room left to expand. Uh, this is felt as well. This is fabric. I don't know what I'll use those for, but I'm sure I'll use them for something. So I made them pretty anyway. So um, when I was at the show, I picked up some nice long shashiko needles, which I'm really excited about having a go at using. So I'm putting them in there for safekeeping at the moment. And then on the last page, again, it's just fabric. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to use these pages for, but... You know they're all double-sided the pages so i can you know pin things in there if i want to and that um and that's the back cover it's all a little bit crazy and colorful but then that's how i wanted it so uh yeah buttons says it's die cut felt trims and stuff so and this is just um strip piecing quilting i'm going to show you um how to make a smaller version basically and not as many pages you don't need as many as i put on here even i don't need this you know it's a bit it's a bit over the top but hey it's there it's done it is too big um it needed to be a little bit shorter a bit smaller it didn't need to be so big so let me show you uh hold tight bear with me i'm gonna move you around Right, close your eyes for a minute. I'll let you know when I finish moving the camera if you get a little bit squiffy on that. Okay. Right. Okay, we're in position. Um, this is one that I've got laid out. Um, I thought I'd cut it beforehand because otherwise it'll you know take a while. Um, the main cover is um, it's it's a cotton fabric that comes ready um, stuck with uh, polyester wadding on. I can't remember where I got it from, uh, but I've got some scraps of it, so I thought I'd use that. Um, and this one I'm making, let me just check the size again. Uh, so the outer cover is 18 and a half centimetres by 16 and a half centimetres. So that's the bit that I'll be quilting on in a bit. I've got a pile of bits here. Um, and then to line the front cover, if you like, um, I've got a piece of this left over from when I made my quilt which I will show you at the end so that will be the lining for that once I've done all my quilting on here so I don't need that yet so that's that size and then the pages for want of a better word um were ooh, what size did I cut them where's the number one here we are um 17 centimeters by 15 centimeters just a little bit smaller because um on this one i found that the the cover i had to extend the cover with this piece of fabric it just wasn't big enough to cover the pages so i thought if i make the internal pages a bit smaller this time um it'll fit easier uh, i'm not going to do the page tabs i guess that's what you call them um there's only going to be one page if you like one double-sided page in this so um, you don't actually need that so let's not do it um and so that'll be the felt piece which 
as I say, when it's folded in half. So you'll have that and that will be the inside. So you'll have plenty of space for loads of pins and needles and all sorts in there. So that'll be that. And then this piece, let me just pull this up a bit so you can see it a bit better. There we are. Um, the pocket on my one I made out of um, like this netting fabric that I had came out of one of those um, fabric sample books. But obviously, you know, not everybody's going to have that. So I thought with this one, let me turn it around to you. I would, can you see that? Yes. I thought I'd make the pocket out of lace and I've just been trying a small pair of scissors. I've marked my center line here where, um, you know, it'll all be stitched together eventually because uh, um, I want to do a line straight down there that will hold this pocket in and then I'll subdivide these. I'll probably just cut the, just sew up the ugh, machine up a line here, just up to the top of the pocket. And then I'll do a thin one there. And then one that's big enough to have a small pair of um, embroidery scissors. They're not embroidery scissors, but I don't know where mine are. And then I thought I'd put a piece of ribbon in. And again, when I stitch here for the pockets, I'll subdivide this into four bits because I thought my pin cushion's gone missing in action there it is I thought what you could use it for is um if you use them your wonder clips so once that's stitched in you'll be able to put some of those on there if you want to or safety pins because it'll be loose so you'll be able to put things through and under or anything else that you want to put in your needle work case really so it's just a way of getting it all in one piece or one place basically so that is page we don't need to do that at the moment um i'm just thinking yeah so this i'll take those off this part can actually be stitched together because i'm not going to do um again on my on my one before i stitch the pages together uh, back to back i put the uh, little word panels on I'm not going to do it in these uh, in case you don't you know in case other people don't have the same needles so cut to the same size I'll do the stitch oh actually no what I'll do is I'll stitch oh change of plan I'll stitch these bits first and these and then I'll stick the two stitch the two pages together uh, because otherwise on the back of the felt you'll see all the lines of stitching which yeah, won't be horrendous, but I don't really want that. So that'll be separate. So let's get on with this. I'm going to turn you slightly towards the sewing machine. So hold on so you can see what I'm up to. Can you see? Yes, you should be able to see. Cool. OK. I um, don't know if you've ever done this before. It is just, it is so simple. It's, yeah, it's easy. So, um just grab some fabrics I again with mine it was a little bit bonkers I just I didn't worry about color I just slapped the fabric on there basically and stitched it I think it's quite nice and it's quite eclectic so um, I shall be doing exactly the same again uh, that one's not quite long enough the whole piece so let me chop off this wonky bit I thought I'd do this all in real time and a finished article. Um, it's going to take a little while, I'm afraid. Um, but, you know, if nothing else, we've all got time at the moment. Um, so start off with... Sorry, it's all upside down for you guys, but bear with me. Um, so start off with a piece in the middle. And then, even though that's an odd shape, I could straighten it up. Yeah, I will do, actually. I was gonna say if it was if it wasn't so wonky I would have just uh, sewed it straight down but it is a little bit of a I mean, you can do it on wonky lines you do not have to do straight lines at all um you know this this really is completely up to you it can be as eclectic as you like so that'll go for something else so right sides together if it's a um, directional print you want it obviously running top to bottom um, and then it's just a simple case of you stitch uh, and away you go. So bear with me. 
take about a one centimetre um, hem, um, you know, it, it doesn't really matter um, because, you know, this isn't structural. You've got the base fabric underneath, basically. So just flip that one over, give it a good finger press. I will take it over to the iron later and give it a good pressing. But at the moment, you just need it to do that, basically. So and then just carry on. Um, I found this nice bit. So let's put that on there. Again, you don't need to back stitch because we're going to um, finish off the edges. I'll show you in a second. I'm not going to bind it. Um, I mean, that is the usual thing that you would do with something like this. You'd put binding fabric around, but I'm not going to go there. Um, uh, this is too wide. So let's take, uh, let's take that bit off there. There's a nice crease line there, so I'm just going to go straight up there, take that off. I can put that on the other side in a minute. And what do I want on the end? I've got a nice leafy pattern here, so let's put that on there. Let's just get that to sit better. You wait there. Okay, I'm not going to take such a wide seam on this one. As I say, you don't need a, a whole quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch is enough. It's just to hold the fabric there. Chop that lump off the bottom and the thread at the same time might be oh no need one more bit from the end uh, what have we got? this nice plain piece here and it's got more flowers on that side so let's turn that over oh actually hang on no that's okay again i'm going to make that slightly smaller because i seem to have sewn that wonkily <laughs> Uh, only I can do that. All right, bear with me. Let's just pull that bit up. Again, not taking a whole quarter of a centimetre, quarter of an inch. So basically, the whole idea of um, doing this. Um, strip I think it's called strip quilting I don't know anyway this um, is that you just cover up your base fabric that's a little bit over the top but that's fine I'll trim that back in a bit so I'm going to work this way now you don't have to start off in the center you can start off on the edge and work your way right across it's you know it's completely up to you uh, is that going to be a bit too matchy matchy yeah let's take that off Let's put another bit of this in. Although I've got this one. Oh, decisions, decisions. Nope, I'm going to go brown. Right. Straighten that up a bit. Sometimes you need a, a strong solid colour just to give it a bit of balance. It really is up to you. got some favorite fabrics i mean this this green one here oh i i just love that i don't know what it well i like lime green but um there's just something about those colors that i love so um it was in my other my original one as well so um right again bearing in mind this is a, this is a directional print so if i put anything on here which is directional i've got to have it going the same way as that one so Right, um, I've got this, not sure, right, don't think about it, just put it on, right, it's actually got some wording on it, born to be wild, so let's, um, let's try and get that to show, could have done with iron in that. So 
sorry <laughs> faffing right stop faffing get it on and try and get that wording so you can see it Make sure you're catching the uh, fabric that you've got underneath. So the actual um... <sighs> words today again. The actual seam. Oh, the seam allowance today doesn't really matter what it is because I say it's um, you know it's a needle book at the end of the day. Yeah, you managed to get the words in there. And I deliberately went sideways on that, so I haven't got to worry about direction, so that's fine. So, there we are. As quick as that, you now have a cover. Um, from here, um, you can do, before you, well, tidy up, tidy up this first, actually. And also, it's a good idea. I mean, you should iron, really, but I won't do it just for time's sake. Just catch down the edges. Flopping everywhere when you're trying to do other stuff. Don't need to worry too much about the um, the top pieces because they're you know they're kind of staying where they are anyway, so that's fine. Just catch the ends. So that's that. So I'm just going to snip up here. Back to the size of my original cover. You could lay it on your um, cutting mat and use your rotary cutter. Um, but that means moving the camera again and I don't really want to do that just right now. So again just trim it up, get it back to size, take off all the loose hairy bits, go away. Right, okay, so, excuse me, the bin, cool. Right, so that is essentially our cover. Now before, so I'll turn it around to you, before you stitch it to the lining fabric, you need to put any decoration on here that you want to add. Um, I, with my Sizzix machine, cut out felt flowers, stitched on little buttons, um, I mean, you can do, did I do any fancy stitching? No, I didn't do any fancy stitching, but you also, you can do fancy stitching if you want and put buttons on the back cover and, you know, whatever you want, really. It is your needle book at the end of the day. So that is basically going to be very pretty, like it, love that fabric. I don't know why I just do. Um, so that one's in the middle and then, then that'll be the back or you know vice versa oh no no because we've got a directional fabric so yeah so it's got to go that way so that'll be the front so um ideally what i would do and i, I probably won't stitch the front cover together i'll just give you the idea of how to finish it um because i would want to sew on some buttons and um you know maybe put on some flowers or something i don't know so that's the front okay let's put that there so this is the inside piece which will back the felt okay so like i said uh, in the introduction there you need to get these bits stitched down now all i'm going to do is a bit of stay stitching i'm not gonna it's, this is not going to be um i don't know i just don't want that ribbon moving around basically so Let's just stitch that on so that it doesn't move. My sewing machine's behaving itself today. It's not eating all the fabric like it normally does when you've only got a little bit to... I'm not going to change the colour of the thread, that's fine. It'll just disappear. So, um, 
there was my central line I marked it with a blue air erasable pen there so that's the center so I'm just going to eyeball I might stitch right down actually yeah I think I will fast let's slow you down crazy machine just going to realign that and take it a little bit slower straight down the middle again to stop this moving around too much stitch across leave the needle down I'm going to make a little pocket here. Only going to go up to the top of the lace. I'm not going to go right up to the edge of the page at the moment. Just do a little back stitch. And then um, I've got one of those stab stitches on my machine, which um, means um, it's a very secure hold, basically, So, uh, which is good. Again, I've said it before, but I wish I'd have got the machine that did the auto cutting, but I didn't. So I'm just going to stitch up the side so again when I come to put the pages together because I'm just going to over, uh, zigzag over the edges it's not all going to be flopping around and uh, being a pain in the neck so I don't need to back stitch there because I'm going to zigzag around the edges. What I mean by that is, let me show you on my one, um, instead of binding um, I've got these crazy threads, sorry, threads, these and I put one in the bobbin, one on top, and uh, just wait for it, a zigzag. And it just captures all the raw edges and just adds to the, the funky colours. I mean, this one's a little bit more sedate than mine. So I might um, I might actually do it in cream or something. So um, where did my little scissors go? Here. So uh, if you imagine... This is going to, that is going to go onto there like that and essentially it's going to fold in half like that to make the inside of your book. So um, when I first opened my book I think I would like my scissors there. So I'm just going to do a stitch line here, leave the felt behind, so it's about there. Again, a little backwards forwards. Because you're going to keep taking those scissors in and out and in and out, and um, you know, that'll be a stress point. So just make sure you go over that slightly. I didn't do the needle down. Uh, again, I'm just going to stitch to the edge. Very wonky position. And then just come up there again to stop it flapping around when I'm and when I do the zigzag edge it will make sure that I capture everything and uh, you know not have a piece missing if you like. Alright, so that's that. Um that might be okay like that actually. I was gonna subdivide it, but I think I'll just leave that, so that's fine. So um, I think that's everything that I want to do on that. I mean, you know, as I say, this is where you need to decide what you would like your, you know, what your what your storage needs are, basically, because, um, you know, we're all different. Some of us have tons of weird and wonderful things, which um, we all want put in a little safe storage place. Why aren't you matching up? Okay, gonna be a pain, that's fine. Um, I'm going to change my bobbin thread. Shall I go crazy with colour? I ought to do, well, it's got all sorts of colours on it, hasn't it? Oh, let's do it. It'll add a little bit of colour to it. So, um, as I say, I've got the uh, variegated thread in the bobbin and I will put one on top as well. I'm not sure what this will look like, actually. I could just do it with the cream thread um, I wonder if it'll pull it under. I don't know. Thinking. Let me just do a quick experiment with a scrap of fabric. Hold on. Let's have a look what it'll look like. So, change it to a zigzag. 
I left it quite big and I uh, took it down to a one stitch size so that it um, acted as like a um, what do you call it? I can't remember what it's called. Um, we uh, gosh, <sighs> right. That's not dragging it through. So I would have I would have coloured on one beige on the other. So let's just put the um, let's put the variegated thread on top as well. Let's make it all super colourful. Um, gosh, what is that? <laughs> oh, when you stick down, when you put down something that's got raw edges and you over sew the edges, it's is it applique? Yes, I think it is. When you would applique something, so it's a nice tight zigzag stitch which stops because uh, this fabric in particular is quite fraying. You can see it going there. So let's um, let's get this done before it frays any more. Okay, right, sorry, this is going to be a bit noisy. I'll do it as quickly as possible. So basically, um, actually, I'm going to put my my zigzag, my zigzag bit up to a six. So the needle will swing to a size six. But the actual stitch length, so the bit, you know, the actual length of it will only be, it'll be quite close, basically, a number one. So um, it'll take a while, so I do apologise. But I thought you might want to see it in real time. So there it is. It's catching the edge of the lace. Let me bring you down a bit and see if you can actually... Sorry, it might get a little bit noisy. Hold tight, hold tight. Let me see if you can actually see what's happening here. Oh, where's the best bit? Let's try there. Hopefully you won't fall off. Let's put you on the table, it might be safer. Right, bear with me, sorry. Close your eyes for a minute. Okay, we're safe. Right, you buy the machine now. I'll try not to block it. Um, but you can, uh, can you see? Hold tight, I'm just going to take you in a little bit closer. Um, so here, you can see it's actually catching the edge of the lace in the zigzag. So, bear with me. got a very strong needle in um i think it's a jeans needle actually i don't know why that's all moved okay i'm just going to keep going for it i'm going to catch the bottom of the lace now it doesn't particularly want to do it but i just have to make it Get your zigzag on, on quite a big zigzag bit if you like, um, to keep your stitch length shorter so that it does actually um, seal it for want of a better word. I think maybe you can see there the way it's catching it. I'm going to go round again so I'm um, sorry, uh, I'll do a slightly bigger stitch next time. I, I just don't get on, me and binding, bias binding, we do not get on at all. Um, so this for me is a less painful way. Hold on. Oh. Right, my felt was moved so I'll have to go back and do it from the other side. Just to make sure that I catch everything together. So again by doing this tight stitch, this is why I stitch down the ribbon otherwise that'd be moving everywhere look at that the felt really has moved I don't know if you can see it's come right off the edge there so I'm just gonna have to unfortunately stop and trim yeah it's missed it here so the next round I will do from um, the felt side just to make sure that I get all that I don't know why that's stretched like that I didn't pull it, honest. I think my machine is due a damn good clean. It's um, done a lot lately. Why aren't you feeding? Come on. 
Sorry, I just need to put my hand here for a second just to get that started. Right, it's got cool under. It doesn't matter if it comes out a little bit wonky donkey. Um, I mean, if you don't want to do it this way, you could do it. Um, uh, you can stitch it right sides together and turn it through, and then you know just do a top stitch around your edges if you want to do it that way. Um, and obviously, you could use bias binding to catch all your um, raw edges and and make a beautiful book. I mean, it really would. But I say me and bias binding. Um, we we do struggle with each other. Sorry, my hands are blurred. Just need to get started. Right, I'm going to do round two on the other side because, as I showed you, it hasn't caught it underneath. So here, you can see. If you can see actually it's not caught away it's caught a little bit but not enough to hold it so we'll do round two from the back let's see if it go any bigger yeah so i'm going to go up to a seven on the zigzag and hopefully it will catch both all sides then get the get the edge of the um the hole you know where it zigzags through get that right on the edge of your fabric and um let's make it slightly bigger right 1.5 to go again it doesn't take very long try and keep your fabric on the edge of that where the little hole is where you can see it's going to zigzag especially on this bit it's um it's properly catching the felt now which is all good turn the corner again line up the edge and if you know what i mean by the edge of the foot um let me just hold tight if you can see here yep so where it zigzags this bit here i've lined it up right on the edge of the um foot so hopefully i just want to put it down gently um it will just catch everything this time and i won't have to go around three not not a biggie if you do i mean as i say this lovely rainbow thread it's an awfully cheap thread i would never do clothes sewing with it or anything like that because um, it wouldn't um, stand up to it. Sometimes it breaks when I'm going fast as well, that's why I've just stopped that for a second. But it hasn't. Uh, but my bobbins run out. Oh, the joy. Right, bear with. <sighs> it always happens. Right, let me get that one there. Get the one there. Should have filled the bobbin up before I started. Never mind. Um, I have finished my uh, patchwork quilt, um, but my bedroom is in such a hellhole of a mess at the moment uh, that I'd be far too embarrassed to share it with you. So. so I do some very strange bobbing winding here. So I forgot to put the holder on this thread. That should be enough. I don't need much. Right, let's take that off there. Um, yeah, so uh, a friend of mine, uh, the lovely Dawn, has um, said that she wants all the plastic boxes. And um, she subscribed, lover, which is all good. Um, so I'll be, um, I said to her, you know, we don't need to socially interact. I'll just drop them at her back gate and... Um, she can just um, pick them up from there and then once my bedroom is like fit for human habitation which at the moment it isn't the cat keeps looking at me as if to say are you gonna clean this room or what um once that's done um i will put the quilt on my bed and give you guys a heads up i can't even remember where i stopped was it there Ugh. oh lord um yeah, kind of looks there. That'll do. Right. Uh, yeah, we're still in the right settings. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so once it's um, a little bit tidier, 
I will show you the quilt cover. It's turned out really well. I didn't actually, sorry, I'll turn that noise down. I didn't actually end up um, putting batting inside. Although the fabric wasn't, uh, you know, I told you it was um, uh, curtain fabric, um, but it wasn't a heavy, it wasn't a heavy one, so I knew it would be fine to quilt with. Um, but when I finished it and I put the um, the bird duvet cover back thing on, I, do you know? I think it's enough, and I I envisage I'll use it as um, just with a sheet in the summer, just as a as a cover up type thing. I always run hot, so um, I don't need a, a duvet in the summer. But um, so I'll give it a go anyway. I didn't build it. I don't think it needed it. I do need to do um, the bit where you uh, where there's like squares and things and that. I just need to tie it to the back cover basically. I think that's a, the official wording. Um, so once I've done that, which I haven't done at the moment, um, I will officially call it finished. But at the moment, it's finished enough. As I say, until I. Um, my room semi habitable. The eBay boxes are taking up a ton of room, so I need to sort all through that as well. Um, we're almost back to the beginning, sorry. I say I wanted to do this real time so that you can see actually it doesn't take that long to do. say it just tidies it all up I've got little bits of lace sticking out here I'm not actually that bothered if you get bits like that if you can see here uh, where you've got bits of the lace hanging out just get a felt tip pen and just colour that in if it bothers you um, it's a good cheat right yeah again another bit of lace sticking out there so let's just chop that off right how did we do that's okay I can live with that that's all right. Um, the blinking scissors have gone walk about again. Oh, they're under here. I say if I want it, if I didn't want to do um, right, hang on. So what did I think? So that will be the front of my booklet. So my scissors will fit in there perfectly. Happy days. And I thought maybe a quick and pick. Could go in there again perfect and then you've obviously going to have that side as well because you move you back up on here hold tight sorry there we are uh, yeah so that will happily and that's why I made the pages a bit smaller because that will now happily sit inside she says sit inside there why is that so much bigger okay i might need to trim oh, i'm sorry i'm not showing you um that's quite big on the top although i do it doesn't matter i suppose but anyway um that will now fit oh, really do you know quilting it has made that cover shrink a bit okay so what I might need to do to it might be a good check for you to do my paint my pages are all sort of kind of sticking out here so what I might do is add another bit of fabric here just to extend the um, cover bit a bit bit a bit and then um, yeah hmm okay Pins in here, as I say, it's double sided with um, that one, so um, that'll be perfect. You can get all your pins, you can get all sorts in there, whatever you need to do. And uh, right, okay, shall I just? I'll just do the cover. As I say, I needed to, right, so I've got directional fabric, so that will be top to bottom. This is directional as well. 
So I need to do that top to bottom as well. I don't think I want the super cycle on my, I was going to say, I don't think I want the super psychedelic thread, but I think I might as well because then it'll really match in. Do I need to extend that? Let me show you what I'm talking about because that would help you, wouldn't it? Um, I'm a bit worried that this has come up a bit short. Do you see, it's very close to the edges here. And once that folds, this naturally... Yeah, I'm going to add another bit of fabric. That scissors, you stay there. <clears throat> right, what have I got? Um, oh, I can't do that because I've already cut my back piece. Let's just do it. Right, we're up the right way. That's a bonus. Okay, what I'm going to do is... I've got the biggest pin cushion in the world and I still can't find it. I don't know if I showed you this, did I? No, I don't think I did. Right, um, RS Island Crafts. Um, she did pin cushions like this, uh, but she did them square. And this standy uppy bit, technical term, um, on hers went right diagonal through the middle and you had pins either side. I didn't want that. Um, I just wanted a big pin cushion. And it is big, as you can probably tell. And then I wanted the standy up a bit at the back for my uh, wonder clips and copious amounts of thread. Um, yeah, so it's ideal. So it just sits at the side of my machine and um, I can pick up wonder clips or pins, whichever I want at whichever time. So it just sits there. I'm just going to pin this on a bit because um, I think that's why that felt went a bit wonky on the, on the inside there. Um, what I could do with this, if it when I when I put this on and I still think it's too small, um, I could always um, add a piece of fabric on, because I think I did it with this as well. Yeah, I did, because um, it was too short here, so I I sewed the fabric on this piece and just wrapped it. No, I didn't. I sewed it on here and wrapped it round to that side, turned under an edge and just sewed the whole thing together. So that just extended that by. Uh, an inch and a half so um so that's that right um do you know i'm not going to do this in front of you i think you get the idea so all you would do is do your decoration on the front because uh, i do want to put some buttons and flowers on here and if i do it if i sew this now i'm not going to be able to do that so let's pretend <laughs> let's pretend that that is sewn together okay lovely lovely and then um in the middle with our center piece um i want it folded that way because i want those pockets on the outside all right so you would centralize it or center it in your cover you might want to do a chalk um chalk pencil line through the middle there unless you're very good at sewing a straight line which i never am so i would actually draw a straight line with a chalk pencil and literally we put it under your machine walking foot on if you've got one and just straight up stitched done um and then you've got you need to play you need to sort of squish it and move it and make it do what you want it to do um if you want you can before you stitch the front and the, the inner and the outer cover on you could put a, a hairband in there and make like um have a button on the front and make like an elastic closure if you would like that or if you've got a popper um you know a press stud whatever um yeah, it's just, you know, you can literally customise this to however you want. Um, if you don't want straight lines on your quilting, go diagonal. Start here, work your way across. You know, as I say, I think the more eclectic your fabric choice, the better. Um, I mean, this one was totally bonkers, you know. I just went for it. I didn't, I didn't think. I just grabbed stuff out of the box and chucked it on. I didn't think about it at all. These bits were too short, so I went two this way. As you can probably tell to that way and then um, I left this one lifted up I put all these on going that way and then when I was all finished I just flapped that over with a small turning and stitch that down done um, yeah and that, I mean I just left that straight at the back as I say the idea of the um, 
the colourful tabs was uh, kind of, you know, so you could just pick up the page. You don't need to do it. I mean, I've I've done it, but I don't. You don't. You just don't need it. Not not for making it working a working thing. Um, I mean, obviously you want might want to do it for decoration purposes. So um, yeah. So that's that. Mine was as I say, mine was huge. Um, let me measure it for you. Uh, some. Oh, hang on, I've got the in front there. Um, yeah, it was seven inches by let's say five inches um, ish. So does it actually open out to? No, it actually opens out to about 11 inches so say five and a half inches then so yeah seven by five and a half and i'll say i put far too many pages in here it's a bit over the top but you know it's me why not so um have a go what i'll do is i'll um i'll finish this one off and say i don't i don't want to bore you to tears by sitting here sewing on buttons i can't imagine anything worse it'd be like watching paint dry um so I'll sew some buttons on. I might do um, a little elastic closure, like I said, with um, a piece of um, elastic um, elastic, and um, a button. And um, yeah, just generally faff around with it, actually. I might uh, put an extension on here just to make sure that it is proper big enough to wrap around. Because um, to me, that's that's a little bit too close to the edge when you close it. Because it naturally wants to push itself forwards so to me it's just i don't know if you can see a little bit too close so i'm going to i'm going to put another inch of fabric on here before i stitch on the backing and um, extend that out the front there like that um i mean all it needs is probably this is too thin to go on the end but um yeah, so if I was to sew that on there and then I make it quite a thick, sturdy fabric, that, yeah, that might just work, actually. Just have a simple flap on the front. Yeah. I'm not going to do this fabric, though. I'm just going to find something else, another piece, different, totally different pattern. Probably cover up that piece there, actually. Go on there like that turn it round i'll have to cut a new bit of this won't i okay well if that's the case then i could use that matchy matchy that end if i attach it there and come out hmm i sure have a go right i'll leave it there um i'll say Sorry, I was hoping to get this done all in one bit, but um, I forgot about the fact that I need to sew stuff on before I actually finish it. So, um, yeah, so you need to get all that on there anyway. So there's the inspiration. Have a go. You can go as bonkers as I did if you want to. It didn't take very long, to be honest. The worst bit was trying to work out pages and things. So this is why I simplified this one with just one page. It It, it would have been... You know that would have been enough for me actually so um yeah i think it would have been plenty anyway i've got a big one now <laughs> so there you go there it is as i say once my bedroom is a little bit tidier i will um bear with me instead of talking to the so machine then we'll move you up a bit I'm terrified i'm going to drop you again all right sorry um yeah once the bedroom's a little bit tidier and all those pox boxes are out of the way nearly said i'm going to be glad there um i will give you an update on the um duvet uh, oh, quilt cover and um everything else really so i think that was it wasn't it i don't think there's anything else that i've made recently that i said i would show you um no, I think that's everything. Oh, I know what I have. I've been messing around with these. <laughs> the Biscornu, Biscornu pin cushions. You know, something to do while you're sat here talking to yourself all the time. 
cat's no blinking company she just sleeps all day so yeah been messing around with these um i've made three i've gone a bit mad because i don't want to do them because uh, i don't need one because i've got my new snazzy super duper huge one here which um as i say it's rs island crafts I, i'm assuming that's who i've seen made it but as i say she did it in a square and and this stand up bit was um this bit which is just stiff violin interfacing you know the stuff for pelmets um which is this stuff here it's like fabric cardboard I don't know. anyway use it in pelmets when you do pelmets if anybody has those anymore um so yeah and that made a really nice uh, it's about an inch let's show you a bit closer about an inch off the off the top of the um pin cushion this is obviously a scrappy border i just you know when i'm making stuff for me i'm really not um i'm not a fussy person basically and i i kind of use all the stuff that i make as um experiments really and if they turn out usable i'm happy with that they do not have to be immaculate you know a lot of people are um as you can see here i'm in a very awkward moment here where my bottom didn't fit my top i don't know why because i cut them exactly the same size but there it is um so yeah and again it's just um it's the same as i did on this cover um just strips strips and strips and strips which is great fun really good fun actually um i'm going to do some more i've got i've um i've got about six pieces of um this um weird fabric covered batting stuff so um i'm going to make a few and uh, stick them in the old etsy so yeah these are these are quite nifty i might make some more of these actually because you know a lot of people like me they've got a lot of pins um and you know i use these things all the time these wonder clips so you need somewhere to store them and i think having them both together like that is quite handy because you can just literally reach over i mean the rest are in the box still but um you know you just anyway the weird wonderful world of susan so yeah so pin cushions everywhere there will be um needle books everywhere um got to work tomorrow uh we're all working from home at the moment um so yeah i'll be working tomorrow so i won't get um we'll get much done tomorrow but then um then it's the week no what's today wednesday there's yeah i'm off friday so i gotta say i'm loving part-time it's great okay um i'll leave it there oh i did sorry i'll keep remembering stuff bear with me you're just gonna go for a little ride i did change sorry i'll get from the electric i did change my craft room around slightly um i think last time oh, hang on let me just change the uh, there right hold on i can't do it <laughs> i can't turn the camera oh, sorry right um last time i was lamenting about the fact that i did not have enough space now i know this looks a little bit awkward because i don't have a lot of space between uh where are we my uh the big table and my desk let me move back here sorry bear with me right as you can probably see how do you turn the camera around come on oh i don't know right okay um anyway basically what i've done is i've managed to move why is it oh no <laughs> oh, senior moment bear with me <laughs> oh god okay um yeah so basically i've got the table out full width now which is heaven um i've had to do um no that way <laughs> oh sucks getting old here we are there we are that's what i want to show you yeah so the desk is a little bit close to the table but it's fine um i've had to double up the bookcases at the back there just to be able to get everything on but that that's it's working great and because having a having the table just with one leaf up it was driving me bonkers i just did not have enough room to work so I did this yesterday and it's just heaven now. So um, I can get my both cutting mats out 
uh, which is oh, why can't I do this here? Um, yeah, so I've got I can get both of my big cutting mats out now, which is lovely, and I've got plenty of room. And there's a little storage thingy that I sort of made up out of an old IKEA box. Anyway, right, that's enough. I've been yabbering for too long. Um, I hope you have a go at making the um, pin things. <laughs> oh, needle books. Oh, sad, isn't it? Um, yeah, have a go. I'll show you some finished ones. Well, there, there's a finished one. It's exactly the same concept. You just, you know, sew it down through the middle. You're back to your... So you just sew that inside your cover, down the middle, and then you have yourself a nice little booklet. If you don't want to bother, pop on the Etsy shop. <laughs> right, um, I think that's everything. I will show you the quilt, I say, once the bedroom's tidy, have a go at these. I hope everybody's keeping well and safe. Um, I've been in total isolation now for, yeah, ages it feels like but it's fine you know i'm all right i'm used to being alone so i get to talk to a neighbor across the fence a bit but um you know keeping the proper distance like you do um and i, I pop down the post office rarely just to get milk so um because it's a general store as well but um it's fine i don't mind i'm um yeah i, I don't mind being alone okay thank you i'm gonna stop now because i'm waffling um have a lovely day Keep well, and I'll do some more videos. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.